Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial. So today what I'm going to be talking about is blog URLs, which are URLs that you can create locally in a user's browser. Uh, instead of pointing to an external resource, they point to some bit of data that you have in JavaScript. So as the name suggests, to create one, you first of all need to have a blob object. So blob stands for binary large object. If you haven't come across one before, it's just a container for data. The large part of the description might be a bit misleading because blobs can contain data of any size. So to create a new blob, you call upon the native blob constructor object to create a new object of its type. I'll save it here under a reference of blob. And you want to pass in to the constructor the data that you want to contain in the blob. So in this case, I'm going to store this string inside the blob. And it's good practice to specify as a second argument inside an object, a mime type for the data that you are storing in the blob. So in this case, the mime type is going to be text plain. In case you're not familiar with mime types, this is a standardized way of describing the data that is contained within a file. So if you go to MDM web docs, you'll see that there is a table here listing all of the possible mime types that you could have. So I'll post a link to this in the description below this video. As you can see, we have text plane here, which is the one that we are using. Another one that you can use is application forward slash octet stream, which is basically a default in case you're not sure which mime type to use. So we now have a blob containing some data and we can create a URL pointing to that data by calling URL create object URL and passing a blob into that method and we'll get the URL back as a return value. So before we use this, let's take a look at it in the console because this is a special type of URL. So unusually for a URL, it starts with blob and then it's telling me that on the IP for localhost on port 5501, there is a resource available at forward slash this character combination. So this URL exists in this browser and temporarily as long as this page exists. So I could open another tab here. And because this page exists, if I try to access that URL, you see I get back the block data. If I refresh, however, and try again, the resource does not exist anymore. And that is because when I refresh this page, it cleared browser memory where the blob data is being held and it has generated a new blob URL, but the old one is no longer valid because memory was cleared. So if you compare these two, you see that they are different. So if I use the new one, it would still work and it would be valid in this browser temporarily as long as this page is not closed or refreshed. So a blob URL is very temporary. The value is that you've created a URL to some data without having to go through a server that you can use in JavaScript and via that HTML, just like you would a regular URL. So for example, I've already selected the anchor element in my markup and I can use the blob URL that I've just created to make the data available in the blob available to the user as a client side download. So to do that, set the href of the anchor element to URL and then I set a download attribute on that element. And this value is going to be the file name that the file is going to be downloaded under. So I'll call that blog to download dot text. Now, when I click on the button, you see that we're getting a download here. And if I open it, you see the string data that we had in JavaScript now in a text file. So this is a fairly common usage of blog URLs. Another example involving text data would be to download some JSON data, convert it to CSV text format, and then make that available to the user to download, in which case you want to set the MIME type to text forward slash CSV and also change the extension on the download trip. But you can use a blog URL to create a download or a file of any type. Now, for the next example, we'll be working with a situation where you commonly come across a blob object, and that is when a user selects a file 
via an input element and you may want a blog URL pointing to that file that you can use on the page. So before we create the URL, let's take a look at the contents of the file. So this code is occurring inside an event listener, listening out for an event of change on the input element. So this is going to fire every time a user selects a new file and the file is available on the files property in an array like list and it's a single file so it's going to be at index position zero so i'll open the console and select a file and you see from the output that what we have in javascript is an object of type file with the following properties on it now it isn't called blob it's a file object but a file object is a type of blob if you log a blob to the console you will see it has a type property and a size property in fact the only difference between a file object and a blob object like we had in the previous example is that a file object has some additional meta information about it like these three properties here relating to it as a file and also this property down here which is useful if you upload multiple files in a folder because it will give you each file's relative path other than these four properties a file object and a blob object are interchangeable in javascript so you can pass a file object into url dot create object url so it accepts a blob a file input as i mentioned is a type of blob and if i log the url to the console you will see that like before it is a blob url so it starts with blob and then we get the path to the data inside the blob held temporarily in browser memory so a situation where this could be useful is if you want to display a user selected image on the page so i'll create a new image here in javascript using the image constructor set the src of that image to the URL, blob URL that I just created. And then I want to wait until the image has fully loaded to append it to the page. So I can do that by setting a value that is a function for the onload property on the image. And when that fires, it means that the image has fully loaded. So I'm ready to append it to the page. So now when I select an image, you will see it on the page and this could be a step before you upload an image to the server so the user would get a preview of the image that they have selected okay so now for the final example which involves fetching external data and reading its payload to blob format okay so i'm going to be fetching an image from the lauren pixum api which is available at pixum.photos forward slash and then you specify the dimensions of the image you want to fetch and it will send you an image at random what you get back from a fetch request is a response object with a readable stream on it and read the payload to blob format you call the blob method on the response object and then the payload is going to be available to you in the next then method as a blob so i'll pass the blob to a handler function which I will define down here. And it's inside this handler function that I will be creating an edited version of the image that is stored inside the blob. So I have that available to me inside the function as a parameter. And the first thing that I'm going to do inside this function is to create a new blob URL that points to that image and I'm going to set that URL as the SRC of a new image element. So we can see the image that we have fetched on the page. So I set the SRC. I want to wait until the image has completely loaded before appending it to the DOM. So I can do that with on load as you saw previously. And inside there, I'm going to append the image to the DOM. So if we open the browser now and I go to example three, you see that the image that we just fetched 
is now appearing on the page. So you might be wondering why I created a new object URL here. Why didn't I just set the SRC of the image to the value of the fetch endpoint? So one reason to fetch the image is you could extend this example and use fetch to track the download progress of the image to update a progress bar. Another is that you then have the image available to you in blog format, and you can do several things with that other than just create an object URL. So you could upload it to a server. You could also read its contents with the file reader and access its size property to get an estimation of its size. So in general, it's much more versatile to have an image in blog format in JavaScript and create a URL with it than it is to simply load the URL as the SRC of an image element. Now, returning to our example, I'm going to create an edited version of the image and then create an object URL to that edited version. So I can do that using the Canvas API. So to do that, I need to create a new Canvas element in HTML. And I need a context for the Canvas. So this is what you actually draw on. So you do that with get context. And I'm going to select a standard 2D canvas. And it's very important that you set a height and a width for the canvas. So if you want the canvas to be the same size as the original image, then you can use the natural height and natural width properties that are available on the original image. Now, the next thing that I'm going to do is to apply a filter. So you apply that to the context on the canvas. So I'm going to set the filter to sepia with a value of one. So this is going to apply a brown pigment to the image, which is going to make it look a lot older than it actually is. And then I'm going to draw the image again to the context on the canvas. And I'm going to start drawing from zero pixels on the x-axis and zero pixels on the y-axis. So the result of applying the filter should be on the canvas now. And we can extract the result to blob format by calling the to blob method on canvas. And the new blob is available to us as a parameter inside a function that you define in there. Now to display the edited image on the page, I'm going to create a new URL that's going to point to the edited image in browser memory. So I pass new blob into create object URL, and then I'm going to load the new URL as the SRC of a new image element. And then, as you saw before, we can use on load to wait until the image has fully loaded. And at that point, I'm going to append the new image to the DOM so that we can see the result on the page next to the original image. So if we take a look in the browser, you see that we have two images here, the original on the left hand side and the edited one on the right hand side, both of which we have converted from blogs to URLs that we have used to set the image elements. Now from here, if you wanted to make the edited image available for download, you have it as a blob and you could follow the same steps that you saw in the earlier example where we had the text available for download. But the final thing that I want to mention in this tutorial is that it is good practice if you are done with a blob URL to remove it from memory, because that will also remove the data that it is pointing to from browser memory. So this could be a real problem if you've got a single page application, because the data won't be cleared unless you remove it like this. So you call URL revoke object URL, passing in the blob URL that you created. And now if we try to access new URL in the browser, what's going to happen is that resource is no longer going to exist. 
So this blob URL is no longer valid. If I didn't revoke the URL, then you see that the resource remains available at that location. So that is it for this tutorial on blob URLs and how they can be useful. I hope you found this tutorial useful. If you did, please consider hitting the like button down below this video. It helps us with the algorithm and others to find this video. And if you'd like to see more content like this from us in the future, don't forget you can subscribe to the channel.